Oh, pronto, Randy. Pronto, Vincenza. How are you? Really good. How are you? I'm wonderful. So I know that um, everyone that's joining us, I'm not sure if you can see us. We are having some technical difficulties now. The screen, but if you're able to hear us, welcome to Pronto Podcast. This is the 12th episode. Can't you believe it's 12 episodes? No, no I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe the Eagles lost. Oh my gosh, we just went right there, huh, Randy? We went uh, right there. Oh, my heart, my heart hurts. My heart hurts. Um, we, uh, if you are an Eagles fan, um, you should be very proud, yeah. very, very proud to um, be an Eagles fan. But also, we should be very proud of our team. They're still NFC champs. Yep. They, they it was a good run, good ride. I mean, we just enjoyed it. Um, everything that uh, was in it. So we were just really excited um, to be a part of the, uh, the ride, right? Yeah, Wasn't it so good? It was really good game. I, I, I can't remember when I saw Super Bowl that really interesting and, and high scoring. I know, yeah. I know they kept us, they kept us on our toes for sure. I mean, I, I couldn't leave the television. I mean, I, I, I enjoy the Super Bowl in general. I grew up watching the Super Bowl with my family and friends, and I always enjoyed it. And it was just oh, it was such a good game. It was good football, right? It was good football. If you're a football lover, you um you you appreciate greatness. Both teams, yep. really, both teams, yep. uh, really good football. But did you have a chance to watch the? Uh, this, the commercials, I know a lot of people watch the, the commercials, the Super Bowl commercials. Did you watch any? There was nothing that uh, stuck out, I mean, it stuck out to me. You yeah. Know, like, usually I have a favorite, <laughs> but I, I didn't really have it favorite this year. Okay, yeah. There were there were some funny ones. Yeah. yeah um, I yeah. was actually, I don't know if you're a movie buff. I love movies. And I'm. Oh, they had the Indiana Jones premiere. Wow. That's Oh, if you're, yeah. Do you like yeah, Indiana yeah, Indiana yeah, Jones? Yeah, Come on, that's yeah, classic, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. If you're an Indiana Jones lover, you'll love that they're coming out with a new movie and with Harrison Ford. So super excited. That was that gave me all the feels. I was like, oh my gosh, Indiana Jones, so exciting. Um, but they had some uh, some really fun commercials. The Doritos commercial was funny. Um, Diet Pepsi oh, was yeah, so yeah. they had. <laughs> I love funny commercials. Um, yeah, you know, they, they just keep you engaged. But uh, did you have a chance to watch the halftime show? Yeah, I did. I, what did you think? I love Rihanna. Yeah, me too. I love her. I'm I'm a huge Rihanna fan. And I know that she's a businesswoman. And I have a lot of respect for that. Because if you think about it, she really was promoting her business, Fenty Beauty. Right. And since this, you know, there's a podcast about beauty. If you love Fenty Beauty, you should try it. I love Fenty Beauty yeah. makeup. Oh my gosh, so good. Yeah. I'm wearing the uh, setting powder right today. Oh, really? oh, yes. I had filming earlier this morning and I knew that this was going to be a long day of filming, especially getting ready for the podcast. And I tried her um, setting powder. Amazing. Wow. And it smells good too. Usually setting powder doesn't have a, an aroma or a scent or it doesn't smell good at all, but it smells good. And, and she's brave. Like, Oh Did yeah. She th see the height that she's coming down from. Right. Oh yes. Oh yes. No, she uh she definitely is not only a talented artist but just a businesswoman. You appreciate that and and I think that was a I feel that was the reason why she took on the uh accepted the I guess you would say the opportunity to be a part of the halftime show yeah. because she really wanted to promote it, her business on top of She's pregnant. Yeah. So yeah. more props to her. I mean, she was able to perform um, in the air, if you want to say, <laughs> in the air, pregnant. Um, but she, I mean, again, I'm a Rihanna fan, so I appreciated the the production as a whole. And if you if you look at the production as a whole, you'll see that a lot of work and effort went into everything, putting it together. Um, but going back to the Eagles, we yeah. still love them. Great ride. I mean, it was it was so fun to watch every game building up to the Super Bowl. We should still be proud yeah. of our uh, Eagles. So go birds, and uh, we're ready for the well. We're, we'll be ready for the next season. Yeah. And how about the women uh, jet pilots? 
Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Right? Oh, my gosh. That's right. I didn't realize that until someone mentioned that. That was really awesome. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. definitely awesome. Um, I appreciated um, the uh, the hi they highlighted that and they mentioned yeah. that. So um, but let's shift gears a little bit, Randy. So Valentine's Day uh, yeah. is tomorrow. Where, as you see, we're we're kind of rocking the red. Yeah, Randy's that's got that's the that's handkerchief, that's and I'm wearing a little red. Um, if you are a Valentine's Day <laughs> lover, which I am, I love I love the holiday because yes, people may say, oh, you know, you should celebrate love all year round. Yes, I agree, but let's let's play it up. Mine as well. Let's, you know, even if you have to just tell your friends, your family, your siblings, your loved ones, just you love them and appreciate them, you know, definitely. Um, let's, you know, take the time to do that this week, especially tomorrow. I think, uh, us guys need reminded. Uh, okay. I'm reminding you. Yeah. Once a year. Okay. Right? <laughs> yes. It, so it, it said a statistic, I read a statistic that Valentine's day is the second busiest holiday for restaurants. Yeah. So, um, so you're, mm -hmm. you're going to be busy. Yes. <laughs> it's, listen, I am not complaining. That is a, a wonderful thing. We're very grateful for um, the reservations that we have ready to go at VNM Bistro. Wow. If you're just tuning in for the first time, I own and operate an Italian restaurant in uh, North Wilmington, Delaware called VNM Bistro alongside with my sister, Margarita. Wow. Um, we're third generation restaurateurs and, um, you know, it's just something that we, we, we don't know anything else. We, we love it and, um, we're gearing up for it. Um, so we're really excited for tomorrow. Um, the restaurant's closed on Sundays and Mondays. Um, we're open Tuesday through Saturday for dine-in service, uh, starting at four o'clock. We are open for takeout all day long, starting at 11, but I always like to reiterate the hours of operation because it's, yeah. uh, it, it has uh, changed a little bit that our dining service starts at 4 p.m. But uh, we're really excited. We're gearing up for that. But let me tell you about today. So I don't know if you know this, Randy. Did you know today is Galentine's Day? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Galentine's Day well, is... I have to buy a gift. No, actually, you don't have to do anything. It's for the ladies, um, you know, whether you just want to get together with your friends, um, you know, whatever you want to do. It's really for the ladies. Actually, my sister and I wanted to go out for sushi tonight. Yeah. Um, we couldn't because of the way our schedules were, were working out. So we had to uh, take a rain check. But we're going to celebrate Valentine's Day on another day. But usually you're supposed to celebrate Valentine's Day the day before Valentine's Day. So um, today might be a busy day for restaurants because it's going to be for the ladies wow. um yeah no we it's a day just to celebrate with your you know your girlfriends and that's why it's called galentine's day i know the salons uh, do a big uh, uh, gift certificate business uh-huh yeah, so, i believe that yeah oh yeah so okay so if you're yeah. for all the guys out there listening if you need a good or great gift idea go to one of curry hair skin and nails locations and purchase a gift card to give to your your sweetie pie and then take your loved one to uh, be in and restaurant oh i like that yeah that's a good plug there you go take it well reservations are a little full for tomorrow but you can purchase a gift card definitely purchase a gift card or just join us another day you know you could celebrate you could honestly you could you should be celebrating love any day and every day so don't think that you have to go out on february 14th to celebrate the holiday you can celebrate it any day of the you know the week really so uh take a look at vnm bistro or you can just visit our website vnbistro.com so. That sounds a little delicious. <laughs> Actually, my sister's um gearing up because uh, she, you know, the, about their custom treats. Wow. My sister is, she's best. so talented. She creates these beautiful custom treats like cake sickles and chocolate covered strawberries and chocolate covered pretzels on top of everything else she does. She's she's the mixologist behind the bar. She handcrafts I, I all the cocktails, chocolate. but she has such a gift for creating these beautiful treats. And she's been preparing for tomorrow because tomorrow is also um, a day where so many people purchase chocolate covered strawberries. That's my favorite. You love chocolate covered strawberries? Uh, Me too. <laughs> I love, I actually do appreciate a good chocolate covered strawberry. So um, any, anything too funny. chocolate, chocolate. I, anything I chocolate yeah, yeah. do you like white chocolate or yeah. dark chocolate dark chocolate but i like okay white chocolate. excellent excellent yeah i am um, i love chocolate too white chocolate's my favorite um but i love all chocolate i mean i'm a i have a sweet tooth so but anyway um before we get into talking about our guest which we're so excited yeah. about yeah. um i wanted just to reiterate welcome 
everyone to the 12th episode of Pronto. Um, it's a lifestyle podcast. Where we're excited to talk about all the beautiful things life has to offer, fashion, self-care, inspiration, favorite memories, or just, you know, anything that comes, you know, to mind. Um, we love to uh, chat about everything that, you know, that's going on between both of our lives since we live such busy lives. So, uh, and uh, so thank you for everyone tuning in, but we have a really awesome guest on the show today. Aren't you excited about this one, I'm really Randy? Excited. Yes, it, this one is going to be oh, one for the books. Just when you think you keep elevating every every episode, I'm like, wow, that was a great guest. Wow, that was yeah. a great guest, and it just keeps getting better and better. But I think we're just so fortunate to have so many influential influential people that join us here on Pronto. So thank you to all of our past guests, and thank you to our future that will be joining us. But without further ado. I think we should introduce our next guest. So we are so excited to welcome our guest for today. Olivia Buckle has worked in the performing arts her entire life through the realms of dance, theater, film, modeling, and behind the curtains as a choreographer, producer, and director. Her career as a dancer kicked off professionally in 2005 at the age of 15. In 2011, at the age of 21, she moved to London, England to found her own dancing school and build dance programs for the youth in West London. She has been casted in leading and supporting roles for over 18 features and short films. She was even nominated for the Best Supporting Actress and has views into the millions for one of her features called City of Trees and is in the editing process of her own directorial and writer debut. Very excited, very excited. In December... Looking for Her was released on Tubi and was received so well, even making Entertainment Weekly's list of must-see holiday movies for 2022. She has two new projects to be released soon called Cheer, Drama, Murder, and her fiancé's Double Life. Commercially, she has booked national spots for Fiat, Rakuten, Twisted Tea, Cartier, Guy Tang, My Identity, and Discover Credit Card are just a few brands. Wow, that's a lot, right, Randy? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Olivia has worked even as a print model, so clearly she has a resume. Please welcome Olivia Buckle. Hi. Hi, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. <laughs> Hello. Thank oh my you gosh. so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat with you guys. Oh, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Your bio is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. It's funny. It's not often read out loud to me. So <laughs> I'm well, like, we're okay. here to remind you that you're you are doing some awesome things yeah. and you're kind of a big deal. So we're gonna here to remind you of that. <laughs> Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> of course, of course. Olivia, thank you again for joining us here on Pronto. Um, we are just so, we were, I mean, Randy and I have been talking about this episode because we were like, oh my gosh, we have so much to talk to her about. But before we dive into all of our, our questions, um, let's, you know, let's just start with, you know, let's give our viewers, you know, a chance to get to know you a little bit. So let's dive right into who is Olivia Buckle? Well, mm. I'm originally from Vancouver, Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I, like you said, I've been a performer mm -hmm. my whole life. Uh, I currently live in Los Angeles. I moved here in 2017 after being living in Europe for about six years. Um, and I met my fiance when we, when I moved to LA, like within a month of being here and, uh, he is from Wilmington, Delaware. Wow. So, oh uh, <laughs> so we got married in, on New Year's Eve of course, at, uh, at the Hotel DuPont. Oh, how and fun. So, yeah. So I've been able to spend a lot of time in Delaware, which is, which is really lovely. Oh, that's so fun. You got married at Hotel DuPont. Yeah. Let's see. Anybody that knows Delaware and knows Ho Hotel DuPont knows that it's an iconic location. Really it is. Um, and I'm sure that it was just a party for the books because I mean, what a great date to get married New Year's Eve. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It Whose was, idea was so that? much fun. Um, you know, it was kind well, I'll say it was my idea, but then he'll say it was his. Okay. But <laughs> it was my idea. Um, mm -hmm. we, it, it really just kind of happened organically. We found the venue. Um, obviously I had never mm -hmm. been there before and, uh, it just totally took me and we went on the tour right after New Year's Eve. So all the holiday decorations were still up and it was just so glamorous and beautiful. And it, I mean, you, I felt like I was in 
a mini Versailles or something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so when good. we so. went back to look at the dates of when we should book it for the wedding, we were like, uh, New Year's Eve is on a Saturday. I think, I think this needs to happen. Mm-hmm. You're like, this could so, work. This could yeah, work. This could really, this could be good. <laughs> so that, so we went with it. Photos. Oh my God. I love that photo. Yeah. Olivia, who, really took, who took your photos? They're beautiful. Oh, he did such an amazing job. His name is Afrik Armando. He's out of Philly. And uh, our, our wedding coordinator designer is uh, Megan Papiano from House of Catherine. And she did such an incredible job of setting, setting the mood and all the, the greenery and the, all the accept, everything. I mean, they did an incredible job and the two of them work together a lot. So they have amazing chemistry and speak the same language. So wow. it was a team effort. Yeah, they're so beautiful. And I love that they're just so different. I mean, obviously, you're no stranger to the camera. So your confidence is showing so well, because again, this is, you know, it's your career. You're just so natural. But I mean, they're beautiful, like out of a magazine. Oh, thank you. It was a little bit about the mirror. Oh, yeah. So so the mirror that was shown in uh, like in the backdrop of that. There you go. Okay. Um, that mirror was brought into my now husband's family as an antique uh, about 30 mm-hmm. years ago. And it, there was a rumor within the family that it was from the original Hotel DuPont in, when they first built it before they built the wing where the gold ballroom is. Mm-hmm. So we did some deep diving. And when we were into the hotel, we were asking around. And the hotel has a historian uh, that works there full time. And he indeed confirmed with us that where the lobby is of the Hotel DuPont currently, the wall to go into the gold ballroom, that was that was just the exterior wall. And that was the rose room tea room for the women. And along that wall, they had all of these mirrors. And if you look closely, you can see the roses coming off the top of the mirrors. So when they did the extension, they got rid of a couple of those mirrors and somehow my husband's family ended up with it. (laughs) So we, uh, we had it restored um, and then had it brought back into its original place for the wedding. So it was pretty incredible. And everyone in the hotel was coming by to look at it, like (laughs) asking about the story. It was, it was really fun. Yes, it's beautiful. Well, definitely made beautiful photos as well for the wedding. It was very fitting. Um, yeah. and we appreciate you were able to share those with us because yeah. it does make that connection to Delaware. If, you know, for a lot of our viewership, yes, is in the tri-state area, but I would say predominantly Delaware too. And I feel that they would understand. And if, I mean, a Del- every Delaware knows the iconic Hotel DuPont. Right. Um, so again, beautiful photos. So glad you're able to share that with us. But um, we're going to shift gears a little bit because we want to talk a little bit more about your career um, and just kind of share with us like how did you like what 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 gave you that purpose to get into the performing arts I mean what was that all about like how did what yeah. me what was where's your passion coming from yeah you know it's so funny I uh, I've I just have always had it um, I my mom put me in dance classes when I was two and then you know she started putting me in sports as well because that's what you do with kids you put them in everything And lo and behold, I would be like eight years old on the soccer field. And the coach just like kept putting me in the goal because I'd be like practicing my dance routines, you know, (laughs) Um, like Olivia, the ball's coming. So I was like very clear that my mind was elsewhere. Um, So I took dance very seriously uh, when I, in eighth grade in high school, when we entered high school, um, I entered a program that was called a half day program. So I didn't take as many school classes. I would leave school two hours earlier than everyone else and I'd go to ballet. So I was in dance classes from like 2 p.m. until 8 or 9 p.m. five days a week. So when I was like 14, I pretty much knew that that, this is what I wanted to do. Uh, And I, and everything, every decision I made was based on me having a professional career as a performer. So I started working professionally when I was 15. and I just loved it. It just, it just kept going. My first job out of high school was like a month after I graduated and it was working on a cruise ship with Celebrity Cruise Lines uh, as a full-time dancer in the, in the production cast, which was incredible. I was gone for like 10 months traveling on the seas, you know, performing wow. every other night. It was amazing with, uh, with a group of dancers and singers from all over the continent. So I, it, it, just, kept, it just kept going. And for me, it's, um, 
it, there's just there's just such a fun message and and I, I just I love the performing. I love yes, making the yes. audience feel something, whether it's um, whether it's feeling something emotional and personal through a film, right. or if it's just bringing joy by doing musical theater numbers on stage on the high seas in front of a thousand people. Right. It, it there's always it's like a way of communication and it's a way of bringing people together. And right. I I've I've always loved it, and I also love the creative process behind the scenes mm. all the people working together you have the, the costumer and you have the lighting and the music and the you know just everything it's like this weird puzzle that seems very discombobulating and like mm -hmm. but then it comes together and it creates something really beautiful right it's it's rewarding right yeah. it's so rewarding I have such an appreciation and respect for the performing arts um mm. I I was very very fortunate that I grew up taking dance classes just like you so I know like the you know at the age of two three years old taking ballet tap mm -hmm. jazz my whole life and then for 25 years I actually taught dance for Did many you? years so I have such an appreciation for the art of ballet, mm. tap, jazz, hip hop, point. Um, and then now, you know, being on, on television, I, I apply those skills. They're very, very helpful skills and important skills. And I, I recommend to anybody, um, if they have children at the age of two, three years old, um, and get them into dance classes because you learn not just how to dance, you learn rhythm, you learn, you build confidence, you, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, studies have shown that it boosts their self-esteem naturally and you're working on your communication skills. You don't realize it, right. but also understanding body language and, you know, being confident, stand up straight, poise. Right. So it, it just teaches you so many of those skills that you can apply in any career that you want to enter later in life. So I, I, I I relate so much as soon as you, you were speaking about it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I totally she's speaking my language. I get it. I get it. Um, but that's that's really awesome that you have this, I, you know, it's almost like a foundation. Like mm -hmm. you, you have these foundational skills that you apply now, present day. And now that you are entering into the the writer and directorial, you know, the, that realm, I'm sure that you feel like it's natural because you've transitioned so well into it. Could you, it, could you kind of maybe enlighten us a little bit more about that? If you can, we, I'd love yeah, to hear about how that experience is going for you. Yeah. Well, I have to say once a dancer, always a dancer that always. never leaves your body. I True. still, I take adult ballet classes and I'm like one of the youngest ones in there and I'm <laughs> dancing with like 50 year old women and it is, it's there. Like it's yes. all in their body. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, 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 I got injured when I was 24 mm -hmm. and I kind of had to have a bit of a moment of self-reflection. And I was like, I love dance so much, obviously, but realistically my body's mm -hmm. not the happiest with it right now. Right. So I, and I had always loved acting. It really, I mean, it's so intertwined with dance. Dance, you're really, you're communicating a message through music. You're not using your voice, but you're using your body and you're, and showing emotion on your face. Um, so for me, I was like, I have to learn how to use my voice. Um, so that, that transition was really about finding, finding my voice. Uh, I did a lot of studying at a school called Guildhall, uh, which is in, which is in London, England. Um, and from there I went to an affiliate, like a sister program, uh, south of, in a city south of Paris called Fontainebleau. And the school is called Fontainebleau School of Acting or Fonact. And it was surprisingly difficult. I think maybe as a, as a dancer, you can kind of understand this, but also in dance class, we're really, we're, it's very disciplined. And mm -hmm. so we are really taught to you, you kind of it's strict. It's a very strict form. And uh, so learning how to kind of speak up and and really use my range of voice and use the 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 projection of my voice was very interesting. It, it, it took me a, it took me a minute. Um, but I found that a lot of the the things kind of like instilled in me with dance, like you're on stage, you always know where the audience is, you always know to stay open to the audience. You're always you're always on, you're always performing. And I found that applied very quickly to theater because 
I'm on stage and I'm always aware. And also to, to camera, you're just, you always have to be open to camera. You always have to be there for light. Right. Um, and so that's something that came very naturally because of all my years on stage as a dancer. Right, right. Um, but the, the thing that really, that really started the transition is after my injury. And I was like, okay, I want to get into film and television. Like, let's start this. So I started to go for different castings, like starting in background work, just to kind of get my right. you know, get your feet dip, wet, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. dip the mm -hmm. toe. Um, and what happened was this opportunity came up looking for stunt women for a major movie. And so after going through this massive audition process, my first role into the film world was Wonder Woman. So cool. Um, wow. And that like <laughs> that just propelled Look at that everything photo. for me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, we were really excited about that. that. I think that's pretty <laughs> awesome, Olivia. Like that's pretty yeah. cool. Like you this was your first like stunt role. Like this was big. Yeah, this so was really big. Tell this us a little bit more about that cuz we were excited about that one. Oh yeah, yeah. My my ladies there, I love them so much. Um it was so, I mean, first off, it was a top secret thing. None of us knew what we were going in for, um, <laughs> which was hilarious. Uh, we all were, they, they were asking for semi-professional athletes, uh, dancers specifically, because we had to learn fight choreography um, and, uh, and actors who were super athletic. And so it went, we, we all went in for an audition they spaced us out over the course of a week and they auditioned around a thousand women. Wow. And after about a month and a half to two months of just bringing it down, down, just like downsizing the numbers, it ended up with, uh, with 40 of us. Wow. We did a four week boot camp, and then <laughs> from there it cut down to 20. And that was the 20 of us. Those were, we were the, the core Amazon group. <laughs> wow. <the> wow. <laughs> to um, make it that far. That's, yeah. That's so cool. That's it really was, awesome. It was really incredible. And uh, we were on that movie for about five, six months, um, mostly training. We trained with the other lead actors as well, but we all had to get into like really buff shape. And also uh, the, the, the lead stunt team, they trained us how to fight with swords and bow and arrows and, you know, how to die and all of that, uh, which was <laughs> the most fun. Like it was so much fun. Um, it was incredibly hard work. Uh, yes, it, I'm sure. it was so, so much hard work. And at the time I was still dancing. So I would go into training from like eight to one and then train back into the city and then teach from like three to seven or three to eight. So it was a, it was a, it was a really, hard year it was a lot of hard work um but it was incredible and when then we filmed in italy and uh we mm. were just like this traveling troupe of a massive cast and crew that would like go to different cities in italy wow. <laughs> like the bandwagon would come and we'd all unload and we'd film and say hi to the locals and then go back in and like, go to the next That's spot so wow. um, That's so neat. did you um it, did you um have a, a I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, literally like, oh my gosh, I have so many questions about what was it like to be on set? Did you get to see any of, you know, anybody, obviously there was famous people and just in that core group, I'm in just the, the lead actors. Mm -hmm. Um, did you have a chance to meet Gal? Was it Gal? Oh no. yeah. Is it Gal Gadot? Did I say Gal right? Gal Gadot? Yeah. Gal Gadot, um, yes. I mean the, the whole ha like lead cast, they were, they're incredible. Um, such wonderful people, such hard workers, so friendly, so welcoming. Um, when we were in training, we, uh, Robin Wright and um, Connie Nielsen would train with mm -hmm. us a lot. And they were such incredible women. Just, I mean, I just love them. I, I love watching them now because I'm just, I just, there's great humans. <laughs> um, and then same, like mm -hmm. Chris Pine and Gal Gadot, they're wonderful, super friendly people. And the, as, as an aspiring actor, watching the dynamic between the director patty jenkins who is a legend I, she um directed monster Charlize theron and monster if no one knows who, who oh she is, yeah but, big right. deal <laughs> um but watching that chemistry and that communication between her and her actors i learned so much i just kind of sat on the sidelines and watched as much as i could you'd see them rehearsing with each other and then preparing for like an emotional scene and I mean, it was it was truly incredible, and the the set was massive. I mean, these huge budget productions are out of this world. I mean, there's just cameras everywhere, and mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's, it's 
really quite massive um, and can be overwhelming. Um, yeah, sure. But just just seeing how everyone interacted and uh, and being there on these super long days and the heat and then these crazy heavy costumes, it was still like at the end of the day, I was like psyched. I'm like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Right. You know? But that's your passion. Mm-hmm. That's your passion. That's your heart. You're like, I'm ready to keep going where some people may not be able to. It's almost like it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint right. when totally. you're filming a movie. And a lot of people don't realize what goes into filming this full yeah. production, like these major movie films. Like it's huge. It's extensive. It's long hours, long days. And like you said, you're, you're with, what was it? You said about five months of being together with your crew. Yeah. We right? were together and- every day for about six months. See, <laughs> Yeah. Right. And, it, yeah. and if you yeah. think about it, you know, the, the scenes that well the the one what is it the second wonder woman the was it the first one or the the second one i was in the first one the first one right the yeah. first one yeah no the, yeah. there's you know the scenes may look like not like oh it's just a few seconds or a few minutes yeah. but it was hours and hours of work hard yes. work blood sweat and tears putting into the production a lot of people don't realize you know what it takes to put together a major movie you know a major film like that well, that first battle, that like amazing battle scene where where the um, the Amazons meet the men for the first time. This right. this scene um, in the movie, I think it's got to be like six to eight minutes, maybe. Mm-hmm. That that scene took a, just under three weeks to film. Right, wow. just I that, that on that same beach every day. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going home and. Running this movie. Running. <laughs> yeah. You need to see. You're going to be looking for Olivia. There's Olivia. There's Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, it's such. Listen, if you're a Wonder Woman fan, you appreciate it. I'm a Wonder Woman fan. So I loved the movie. Um, okay. But you definitely, Randy, if you haven't had a chance to watch the movie, you should. Um, and now that you know someone in the yeah, movie. I, yeah. <laughs> um, but that, I'm sure that was just a stepping stone for you, right? Yeah. So and- what happened? So what I, let's let's kind of paint that picture for our viewers. Like, so after this incredible experience on set of Wonder Woman, what happened next? Like, did you, I'm sure your career started to continue to blossom. Well, yeah. So after that, after we wrapped that, I went through a, a grieving period because I missed it so much. You know? Right. That was a lot um, of fun. <laughs> yes. So fun. Um, I enrolled in theater school directly after that because I just left on such a high and I was like, this is, this is my next step. This is what I need to, to focus right. on. And uh, I enrolled in theater school. I went, I did two separate programs uh, that were very intense, very full on um, drama school programs did, you know, went through a lot of like Shakespeare and contemporary theater and, and all of that. Uh, and then from there I'm dual citizen. So I'm from Canada originally, but my dad's American. And when I graduated my theater program, I realized for myself that the the best next step was for me to come to Los Angeles. Even mm. though I I loved living in London so much and I loved living in Europe, I knew that I I it was time for a change. So I moved to Los Angeles and I really just had Wonder Woman on my resume, which obviously is an incredible credit to have. Um, yes. But it still isn't a ton. Mm-hmm. And uh and the European drama schools, I think, are recognized a little bit differently in in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So it it took me a minute to really like get going. I really I really came with not a whole lot. Um, I have a massive dance background, mm-hmm. which helped me get a commercial agent, uh, and I had a modeling background, so that really helped. Uh, but as far as theater it and film film television acting, it it took a minute. Um, it took basically me. Trust, getting trust within my agent. Right. So I said, look, let's sign commercially, but I, I need theatrical representation and I'll prove that to you that I'm, you know, like worthy of being right. signed for it. Uh, so it, it took about a, took about a year and a half of doing low budget student short films and other short films and little independent projects mm-hmm. where I would just like go off on a weekend with some people and just film something just mm-hmm. to get, just to get footage to put right, together that resume. A, exactly and put together a demo reel. Right. Uh, so that, that basically happened. Um, and that was the, that was a big hustle for the first 
about a year and a half. And it, I mean, the industry is very difficult. It's just constantly like this, <laughs> right, right. As, it, as you know. <laughs> yes, no, no. And it's, it's something that it's, it's okay to talk about too. And I think it's mm-hmm. important to talk about to anybody listening or wanting to dive into the, into a career of acting or modeling or whatever it may be that it's not easy, but that's okay. Because the saying is, um, nothing, you know, I, I always feel that nothing worthwhile is, you know, is comes easy. Right. And yes. we like to work for it and we hustle for it because then the, the reward is far more greater. And, you know, you are putting your time, your blood, sweat and tears and, you know, building your career and your resume. And, and you knew that you saw that, okay, I loved this experience on Wonder Woman. I want to keep doing this. I need to elevate myself. I need to enhance my skills. And you did that. You didn't waste any time. You're like, okay, I need to go to school. I need to enhance my skills. I need to put myself in the right network. I need to make this move. And you did that. You took those risks. So, you know, hats off to you, Olivia, for taking those risks to do that. I mean, it's, it's not easy. It's scary for some people. It, yeah. What? Thank you so. My gosh, I feel like you're my hype woman. I love. Yeah, that. but it's Thank true. <laughs> Listen, it needs to be acknowledged. I, I, yeah. I, I, I just, I feel you just painted that picture for me, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel that that work, that work mm-hmm. ethic. She did what she had to do, and I'm sure at the time it was scary, and you didn't know, and and you had to take those steps instead of just throwing in the towel and say, okay, I got nothing. I'm just gonna, you know, kind of quit. You didn't. You persevered. Yeah. And, and you have to get used to rejection too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That is so, that is so, so true. And I think I, I find this too with a lot of uh, just artists in general, whether you're a painter or an actor or a dancer or a writer, mm-hmm. you know, a very good friend of mine is a screenwriter in Los Angeles and, um, and any, any sort of, creative type of work that you're doing that is basically all Mm self-motivation really um it's it is very difficult and it does go like this and it is like you said it is good to talk about it to be open about because it it reminds other people that they're not alone in their in Mm -hmm. their like fight and perseverance and and all of that because uh, Mm -hmm. it can feel quite lonely sometimes when you're just like am I doing this right? Like what's going on? And no two journeys are the same either. It's very hard to, to, yeah. But I mean, a lot of people like to like give advice and tell you what to do next. And it's like, everyone comes from a different background. Everyone has a different, Mm -hmm. a unique way of working their art. So it really is tough to compare journeys. It really is. It's so individual. Um, And, uh, and it, it's tough, but it's high risk, high reward. It's so worth it. Yes. Thank you. Yes. You need to say that over and over again for anybody listening. Um, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that it's all about the journey versus the destination and yeah. what you take away from it and what you learn and how you grow and how you navigate the, you know, these experiences, what can you do to better yourself and, you know, just take yourself to the next level. And it's work, yeah. it's work. And there's nothing wrong with rolling up your sleeves and putting in the work in. And I love that you're not afraid to talk about it. That's really important. You gotta, you know, we have to talk about these things We're everyone's quick to talk about the success. Well, let's talk about the work. Yeah. Let's talk about the sacrifices. Let's talk about how you were you you persevered through all these hurdles, like you said, the roller coaster, you know. And and I love that. And now, let's talk about your accolades and these release these movie releases. Let's talk about that because we didn't mention it earlier. So, did you want to mention any specific ones and and what how we can find out or, or look sure. into it more? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, as you said in the intro, uh, looking for her is yes. a it's a holiday rom com film that uh, w- that was released in November or December. I can't remember now, but it's uh, <laughs> it's on Tubi uh, to stream for free, and you can also rent it on iTunes. And that's been really well received. We're super excited about that. The woman who I act with is also the writer and director. Um, Ali Swarens, and she's incredibly talented. This is the second film that we've made together. So uh, so the, the, this was just a really exciting project for it to be released and for have people to reach out and say how much they love it. And so that's just been so fun. Um, we have I have another one called Toxic Impulses, which is a 
a thriller. I come kind of like the anti-heroine. Like you don't okay. really want me to win, but I might. <laughs> <laughs> like you're kind of rooting for me, but you also are not. Um, that one's going to be on Tubi pretty soon as well, but it's also uh, available to rent on iTunes. And then we have Cheer Drama Murder, which is such a fun movie. Um, mm. That's we don't know the release date on that one yet, but I'll be sure to to you know post it online when we do. Uh, and then there is her fiance's double life, which was filmed in uh, South Carolina, and mm-hmm. that's going to be out on Lifetime in May. And uh, this is uh, obviously you can tell by the menacing look on yeah. <laughs> the lovely Jonathan's face uh, that this is <laughs> more of a more of a mystery thriller. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but yeah. so much to be proud of. Wow, you you've been busy. I've been trying. I've been trying. <laughs> is, is your husband in business as well? You know, he's not. Um, no, Grant is uh, Grant is the special projects coordinator at Los Angeles World Airports. So he works in L.A., not in the entertainment industry, but he did dabble in it for a hot minute, which is how we met. We met working in a theater company together, which was one of my first jobs when I moved oh, wow. to L.A. And okay. uh as he likes to say, that was the height of his career was meeting me. And then Aww, he left. <laughs> love that. Yes. Yeah, see, that's so perfect. Grant, if you're listening, she loves you. Clearly it's true love. Um, I know that we had a question earlier. Someone had, uh, I um, had asked about how did you two, you know, how did you guys meet? And I'm so glad that you touched on that because I know that we, when it's funny during the podcast, Randy and I, we like to talk and we like to have conversation and we kind of just go off on, you know, not, I don't want to say tangents, but we like to just go with the flow, mm-hmm. whatever comes naturally when we talk to our guests. And, and I always try to get to the questions that our viewers are, you know, are, are asking, but I'm so glad that you mentioned that because someone did ask about how did you guys meet? So um, that's beautiful. And, and it, it seems like he's very supportive of what you're doing in your career. He is so, so supportive, so supportive. And I think, I mean, quite honestly, that's one of the reasons why we are together is because Mm -hmm. I am very career focused and Mm -hmm. um, I can't really be in a relationship with somebody that's not going to support this wild ride that I am inevitably going to be on. Um, And he is, he does every self tape with me, no matter how tired he is when he comes (laughs) home from work. He's like, right. he's there reading with me, even if it takes two hours. Um, right. He's there at every premiere. He takes all the behind the scenes photos. He's incredibly supportive. Which, yeah, that's a big role. Randy, it, if you know anything about yeah. self-tape auditions, it, it's a lot of work. I mean, just, yeah. look, just look at our production set we have here. Imagine right. doing this on your own for a self-tape audition. So not only are you, you know, you have the nerves are kicking in. Do you want to make sure you present yourself in the way that's fit for the role that you're auditioning for? But the lighting, the sound, the quiet room, mm. and then making sure the lines are executed correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yes, everybody needs everybody needs a grant in their life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Right. All right. That's so funny. All right. So I yeah. do want to mention um, your nonprofit. I oh, am, yeah. I'm, I, 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 I saw that and I was like, oh yes, we definitely have to talk about this. Um, Olivia, I, I know Randy knows, but I, I co-founded my own nonprofit literacy organization 20 years ago oh. called Success Won't Wait Incorporated. And I promote literacy and reading to young children. So when I saw that you have this amazing nonprofit organization called Shoebox Project, we need to talk about this. So uh, let's, uh, you know, tell us its mission and what it's all about. Um, Sure. I'm going to look up yours too. That sounds incredible. Wow. That's amazing. (laughs) Um, So the Shoebox Project was started, was founded in Toronto Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2011 by a a group of sisters and sister-in-laws. And they have been across Canada very, very successfully since then. Um, And they then expanded to the US and to the UK. So each city, each chapter has a chapter coordinator. So uh, two years ago, I found out about the nonprofit and I was like, oh, I, you know, I want to participate. And I found that they didn't have a chapter coordinator in Los Angeles. And I was like, well, I guess I'll do that. <laughs> so, oh. so I've kind of taken on that position. Um, but the Shoebox Project for Women, it's a, it's a nonprofit that provides shoeboxes filled with gifts and necessities for women living in shelters impacted by homelessness. Mm. And the the mission really is to provide support, um, a community, just pass on love to women who are Mm -hmm. 
really trying, you know, trying to get their life back on track for, from whatever circumstance I've, I've um, been doing these deliveries now for two years. And I've met women who have so many different stories and journeys and reasons for why mm-hmm. they're in the, right. They're in the uh, shelter. Um, and really, you know, the mission is to give them a, a hug and tell them that they're not alone and that mm-hmm. we're rooting for them and, uh, and give them a beautiful gift. Um, the founders found that there were a lot of around the holiday season, there was a lot of uh, like shoe boxes for kids and a, a lot going on for children, but they were going, what about the moms of the children? Mm. Um, how can we give back to them? How can we help support them so that they can, you know, continue being moms or just, you know, these women. So, right. Uh, so that, that's what the, the nonprofit is. And I, Oh, I love being a part of it. It's really yeah, we can we can tell your passion is, yeah. is is your heart is there too, and and it's a beautiful thing because for anybody <laughs> being involved with any nonprofit is is healthy is good. Find what what fuels your fire mm-hmm. because it is truly yes rewarding but on another level and uh, you know you can tell just by the photos you know you were showing us you you know that it, it's truly gives you it's almost like it gives you meaning to give back and yeah. it's it's healthy it's very healthy but it's important to give back and and your involvement with the shoebox project i had no idea um about this nonprofit organization so yeah i mean the fact that you were able to introduce us to this i mean i don't i don't think they have a chapter in delaware they, they don't should. they don't no. right okay they they should they don't. We, no no i'm busy maybe <laughs> i was like i don't know i got my own nonprofit right now um but i i would support it 100 mm-hmm. support this the shoebox project um for women i think that you know it's helping women impacted by homelessness i think that is very much prevalent and should be you know I guess you would say recognized and promoted. So yeah. maybe you never know, maybe a Delaware chapter will, will come about just from this interview, but uh, Olivia, that would thank be you for, awesome. bring, thank thank you for bringing yeah. attention to this. Yeah. This is important. And if you can make time for a project like this, mm-hmm. you know, everybody can make time. Mm-hmm. Like you're yeah. And busy. it's well, and it's also, that's kind of the beauty of it too, is that um, it, it re- the holiday drive is the big one. Okay. You know? um, then we do a few other drives throughout the year. Uh, so it's, it, it ebbs and flows as well, which is really great because like right around the holiday, I can give like all of the attention to it and like, right. like really reach out. We've got some, we got really great, um, sponsorships this year, which was super exciting. So it, it really is like, I consistently am reaching out to people throughout the year, but then it, but then when I like, I decide to do a drive, it like full throttle. Awesome. <laughs> so well, if it's, you, it's a nice wave. If you ever need children's books. I do have adult books. Now that I think about it, I do have a, um, I have a warehouse where I store all my books that I collect for redistribution. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we collect um, books, predominantly children's books, but I do get a lot of chapter books and adult books and we sort through them, salvage the ones that are, you know, that are still in good condition and we redistribute them to places where they're needed most. So we do partner with other nonprofits if you need books. I have access to it. Um, okay. If, you know, think about that. If not, you know, I'm yeah. always thinking because, you know, reading is important for all ages. Yeah. Reading yeah, absolutely. For all ages. But um, thank you again for your efforts with the Shoebox, uh, Shoebox Project. For yeah. those listening, definitely, ha- you know, check it out. Um, yeah. Ways to, I'm sure you're looking for donations, sponsors, yes. ways they can help and contribute. Um, I just have to chime in. Uh, Grant is listening. I, your <laughs> husband's listening. I love it. He goes, I'm listening. And she was right. <laughs> I love that. Uh, that's so great. See? Supportive. I love it. That's how it should be. I love that. That's a beautiful connection, a beautiful thing. All right. So um, we talked about the wedding. We talked about your incredible career. And, and you know, obviously you are a uh, philanthropist as well. Um, what's next? Hmm. What is are you, I, I don't know if you're allowed to say anything, any new project? No, I, I mean, there's, there's always stuff in the works. I just, okay. I've just, I've been very happy with how things have been progressing over the Good. last year. Uh, so I just want things to keep going. I'm good. Consistency, I, right? <laughs> yeah. Consistency yeah. is, is, is everything. Um, just, I enjoy working in every project I do. So I just more, I'm just like, let's, Perfect. yes, thank you more, please. You know, yes. I'm just, uh, just all the things. Um, I'd love to expand the shoebox project a bit more. Um, 
and uh, and to just keep working with other artists and all of that. I've just been Excellent. enjoying it so much. Excellent. Olivia, how can our viewers and listeners uh, follow your journey and follow um, you? Is there, a, tell us your Instagram handle, website, all that good stuff. So my Instagram is at Olivia Deanne, uh, D-E-A-N-N-E. And then my website is oliviabuckle.com. Instagram is usually where I, I put everything and I have links to different projects that I've been working on. Um, and then the shoebox project, I manage that Instagram page as well. So that's uh, shoebox project underscore Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I basically kind of post everything there. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Oh my gosh, we're so yeah. excited. All right. Well, we are nearing the end of the interview. And as tradition, Randy, yeah. right, we like to ask uh, all of our guests in this traditional question. So here it is. If you could chat with anyone from the past or present on a podcast, who would it be and why? So I think, I mean, I could give like a full list of people, (laughs) but but the top of the list, (laughs) it has to be Lady Gaga. Yes. I, I really (laughs) love her. I love her music. Um, She's an incredible actor Mm -hmm. and I, and she's had a very interesting journey, very, very interesting one. And, um, I think she has a really interesting point of view Mm. and that's one that I would really, I, I really like to discuss that. Um, and I think she would just be a riot. (laughs) Oh yeah. I I think that's a great person. I would, I would tune in for that podcast. Me too. Right. Yeah. Sign yeah. me up. I would tune in for that one. So Lady Gaga, if you're listening, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Buckle would love to interview you. Would love it. <laughs> well, Olivia, thank you again for yeah. joining us here on Pronto. We were so excited to meet you and connect with you. And, and again, thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule to yeah. join us. We wish you so much luck and continued success in your career, also with your involvement in the nonprofit um, and any future projects. Please don't be a stranger to the Pronto podcast. We'd love to have you back on in the future for an update. Um, And hopefully we get to meet you in person. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. That was so lovely. Of course. All right. You you. take care, Olivia. (laughs) Bye-bye. Oh my gosh. I knew she would be amazing. I had a feeling, right? Oh, gosh, we're so fortunate to have so many incredible people on the show. I was thinking today, I want to be friends with everybody that we have on the show. Yes. I mean, it's just, listen, we were very... We're very fortunate that we get so many, you know, influential people that join us and that want to join us and have the conversation and share their story. And that's what it's all about is sharing their story because Pronto is not just about us talking about our lives. It's about inspiring. And we are able to provide this platform for our guests to share their stories and inspiration because that's really what it's all about. And I love that Olivia was able to really be transparent with us about her, her journey. I appreciated that. And I'm sure everybody listening appreciated that, that it's not easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be work. It's supposed to be hard work and you're supposed to push through. And she persevered and she knew that she really loved acting and needed to enhance her skills. She went to school, she learned, and that's, that's the, also that dancer in her. She's very disciplined and she knew, okay, if I, I want to be good at it, I have to work hard for it. I have to practice. And with repetition, she knew that she would get to the next level. So that was really awesome. How about the wedding? It's, it's oh my gosh. Those beautiful, right? beautiful wedding, beautiful photos. I mean, I'm so happy she was able to share that with us. And thank you for Grant tuning in. Yeah. That was really awesome that her husband was able to show support. And I'm all about, um, you know, you know, having a supportive, um, I guess you would say significant other, you know, by your side, really cheering you on. That's really, really important. And it's healthy, uh, really, really healthy because I love that she's so career driven. Right. And yes. we were lucky enough to do the hair and makeup for her wedding. Oh, so you that, did. Yeah. Curry hair, skin and nails yeah. did yeah. the hair and makeup for the wedding. Yeah. Well, it, it showed the pictures yeah. were gorgeous, yeah. obviously, but her hair and her styling was beautiful. I mean, she's gorgeous naturally. Yeah. And, so, she, And she was a big hit, like all the beautiful beauty providers loved her really oh my god (laughs) ah that's so awesome well again thank you for everyone tuning in this i mean the 12th episode of pronto 
and to many more. Um, but make sure that uh, you join us um, next Monday, February 20th for our 13th episode. Lucky 13. Lucky 13. We're very excited. Um, again, everyone, thank you for joining Randy and I. Oh, yes, Randy, and, and please. The audience is growing immensely. Yes, and that's I, a good sign. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's, all, that's really, definitely uh, a good sign. And we have a surprise coming in March. You know. Oh, stay tuned. So, I love yeah. surprises. Do I know about the surprise? I think you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Stay tuned for March. There's a surprise. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you uh, next uh, Monday, February 20th uh, for our 13th episode. We have someone joining us from chopped the food network chopped award-winning home cook lisa keys yeah, oh stay tuned should be good. <laughs> all right well pronto randy pronto vincenza <laughs>